The fluctuations mentioned earlier are often quite minute, yet highly significant. The conscious mind knows well of its own functioning state. When once it is led to face this, it finds not chaos, or worse, non-existence, but the source of its own abilities and strength. The personality then begins to use its own potential. Periods of reverie and creative moments of consciousness both represent excellent entryways into these other areas. In the usual creative state of consciousness, the regular waking consciousness is suddenly supported by energy from these other areas. Waking consciousness alone does not give you the creative state. Indeed, normal waking consciousness can be as afraid of creative states as it is of blank states, for it can feel that the I is being thrust aside, can feel the upthrust of energy that it may not understand. It is precisely in the low points of fluctuation that such experiences originate, for normal consciousness is momentarily at a weak state and in a period of rest. The whole physical organism undergoes such normal fluctuations, again, that are usually quite unnoticed. These periods also fluctuate, following rhythms that have to do with the characteristic personality. In some of the waves of motion are comparatively long and slow, the valleys within being sloped with others, the reverse is true. With some, the lapses are more noticeable outside of the norm. If the situation is not understood, then the personality may find it difficult to relate to physical events. If he is able to per perceive the other areas of consciousness, he may find himself in still more difficulty not realizing that both systems of reality are valid. The fluctuations also follow a seasonal changes. Events from any given layer of consciousness are reflected in all other areas, each being actualized according to the characteristic of the given layer. As one dream is like a stone thrown into the pool of dream consciousness, so any act appears in this pool also in its own guise. Altern alternate focus allows you to perceive the many manifestations at any given act, the true multidimensional reality of a given thought. It enriches the normal consciousness. You are active in these other layers whether or not you are aware of it. You learn not only in physical life and in the dream state, but in these interior existences of which you have no memory. Creative abilities of a specific nature our healing abilities are often trained in this fashion, only then emerging into physical actuality. Your future thoughts and acts are as real in these dimensions as if they had already occurred and as much a part of your development. You are formed not only by your past but by your future and by alternate existences. These great interactions are only a part of the framework of your soul. You can, therefore, change present reality as you understand it from any of these other layers of consciousness. Any one of these various layers of consciousness can be used as a normal acting consciousness, reality being viewed from that specific standpoint. Physical reality is therefore glimpsed by other kinds of personalities in other systems from their own unique viewpoint. Peering at it from this angle, so to speak, you would not recognize it as your own home system. From some of these viewpoints, your physical matter has little or no permanency, while to others your own thoughts have a shape and form, perceived by observers but not by yourselves. In traveling through the states of consciousness, these other personalities would try to attain some focus and perceive your environment, trying to make sense of data with which they are largely unacquainted. Since many of them are unaware of your ideas of time, 
they would find it difficult to understand that you perceive events with intervals between and would not perceive the inner organization that you thrust upon your normal environment. Yours is obviously a probable system to other fields also touched by the field of probabilities. As these symbols and as these systems are adjacent to yours, so is yours adjacent. Alternate focus allows personalities from other realities to perceive your own, then as it can theoretically at least allow you a glimpse into their existence. And the next will be chapter 20, The Meaning of Religion. There are internal realizations always present within the whole self. There is comprehension of the meaning of all existence within each personality. The knowledge of multidimensional existence is not only in the background of your present conscious activity, but each man knows within himself that his conscious life is dependent upon a greater dimension of actuality. This greater dimension cannot be materialized in a three-dimensional system. Yet the knowledge of this greater dimension floods outward from the innermost heart of being and is projected outward, transforming all it touches. This, flooded out, this flooding out imbues certain elements of the physical world with a brilliance and intensity far surpassing that usually known. Those touched by it are transformed in your terms into something more than they were. This inner knowledge attempts to find a place for itself within the physical landscape to translate itself into physical terms. Each man then possesses this inner knowledge within himself and to some extent or other he is also, also looks for confirmations of it in the world. The outer world is a reflection of the inner one though far from perfect. The inner knowledge can be compared to a book about a homeland that a traveler takes with him into a strange land, a strange country. Each man is born with the yearning to make these truths real for himself, though he sees a great difference between them and the environment in which he lives. An eternal drama, an, inter an internal drama is carried on by each individual. A psychic drama, which is finally projected outward with great force upon the field of history. The birth of great religious events emerges from the interior religious drama. The drama itself is a psychological phenomena in a way, for each physically oriented self feels thrust alone into a strange environment, without knowing its origins or destiny, or even the reason for its own existence. This is the dilemma of the ego, particularly in its early states. It looks outward for answers because this is its nature to manipulate within physical reality. It also senses, however, a deep and abiding connection that it does not understand with other portions of itself that are not under its domain. It is also aware that this inner self possesses knowledge upon which its own existence is based. As it grows in your terms, it looks outward for confirmation of this inner knowledge. The inner self upholds the ego with its support. It forms its truth into physically oriented data with which the ego can deal. It then projects these outward into the area of physical reality. Seeing these truths thus materialize, the, e the ego then finds it easier to accept them.